Michael Botlow's strong interaction with CERN started in 1983 when he came to Geneva from Austria as a summer student. Although at the beginning he'd not planned to stay, he ended up leaving CERN only 15 years later when he finally moved to the United States. Michael was involved with antimatter research at the time when this was still just a dream of a small bunch of physicists. We met Michael in downtown Manhattan where he set up the offices of his own company. But everything started back in the good old days at CERN. I'm an experimental physicist. Uh, did my PhD at CERN at uh, LEA, the Low Energy Antiproton Ring. Uh, in a very collaborative uh, environment, this is where I learned to collaborate and work with uh, a variety of other people uh, from other nations, other languages. Um, some of these languages I didn't even know, such as French, uh, because we never learned that one in school. And so, um, so I had to uh, not only do science, but also uh, bind myself into a sociological environment that existed there, uh, different cultures and uh, uh, skills also. After an exciting two years spent working on antimatter, Michael was called to join another historic team at CERN, the UA1 collaboration. In 1984, just a couple of years before Michael joined the UA1 experimental team, its spokespersons, Simon van der Meer and Carlo Rubia, had won the Nobel Prize in Physics for the discovery of the Z and W bosons. Again, it's a bigger experiment, there were 150 physicists back then. Uh, it's a large team, more of uh, group dynamics. Uh, also, of course, since they had won the Nobel Prize, they were also a little bit more, uh, in some ways, proud of themselves and um, a little bit more pushy. And uh, so one has to learn to fit into that environment too. All of this is a very good school for later because fast forward on Wall Street, uh, you can imagine what's happening here. If you saw any movies uh, such as The Wolf of Wall Street and so on, it's not uh, pure fiction. Uh, things really happen there. So people are arrogant and uh, are 24 seven active and want to get ahead of you. And um, so not everything is uh, just happy camping. Uh, and does in some sense a little bit of that uh, happens in large uh, physics collaborations also. Uh, your colleague wants to write the paper and uh, wants to get uh, ahead uh, in some ways first. So there's collaboration but there's also competition. Michael subsequently went on to become the first LHC fellow. However, Back in those days, the LHC was still being designed and few people believed that such a complex machine would eventually work some years later. Uh, because back then the LHC was not known at all. This was just a pipe dream. Uh, completely uh, not, uh, to at least to me and to many others, it was not conceivable that this can be ever built. It's so complicated and even if it can be built, uh, you will never be able to measure anything because it's just a big mess of uh, particles that are coming out there. And with the electronic from back then, and, and the, the systems from back then, uh, no way to get anywhere. Uh, so anybody that proposes this must be hallucinating. Fast forward to New York. In 1996, Michael began collaborating with some of the most influential financial companies with their headquarters in Wall Street and seeking the best ever simulation of the world's financial markets. But, wait a moment, what do scientists have to do with experts in finance? Uh, they have their focus, they are very driven, they work 24-7, they want to make things happen. Uh, and uh, so on that thing, not as different, not very different from a CERN experiment. Uh, interestingly enough, the science is very similar too, because after all, uh, the evolution of a stock price uh, in time, with its volatility is very similar to the evolution of heat in a rod. So you can describe some of the uh, option calculations by using the analogy of the heat equation, which happens to be a differential equation. So from that point on, 
uh, there is a lot of similarity one can now build into options derivations which have to do with physics. Uh, the same is true with Brownian motion, which is something uh, people like Einstein already worked on. Uh, we use those concepts in finance. Uh, true also in terms of technology and computing. Uh, we use the same Monte Carlo techniques that uh, uh, physicists and scientists use to, for example, model the uh, functioning of a detector. Uh, when particles fly through, that is Monte Carlo, and all the, the efficiencies of a detector is derived through Monte Carlo techniques. Same is true in, uh, in finance. We use a lot of Monte Carlo methods to figure out uh, what the evolution of stock prices are, and therefore we can calculate uh, option prices, which are derivatives of stock prices, uh, pretty accurately. However, the financial crisis of 2008 caused problems for Michael. His company was floated on the stock market. It was time for him and his colleagues to seek new challenges and create their own hedge fund, enabling them to forecast what is going to happen in the next millisecond, seconds, hours, days in the stock markets. Today, Michael continues to develop these basic ideas with his company, where a multidisciplinary team of experts coming from all over the world join forces to develop faster and faster software products for the financial markets. He's also involved with training the new generation of experts, most of them having a scientific background. In all this, what can the CERN Alumni Network offer such a successful individual? Connectivity is the first. So I would like to know who else in New York City is an alumni. Connectivity results in opportunity, and maybe there are opportunities to, for uh, a common interest, information exchange, uh, and who knows, maybe even more. Maybe a trip to CERN together, or uh, exchanging memories, things like that. Uh, but also it could go into education. Maybe one can do uh, a trip to the local colleges. Uh, they're always asking uh, to come and uh, give some uh, presentation or have some story uh, with them so one could get together. Um, so there are many opportunities. It's just the first things first, which is learn to know each other. And uh, same, what I would give first and foremost is, is some time. Uh, so I'm very really happy to uh, ventilate ideas, brainstorm, make things happen there and, and spend some time on it. The education that goes deep gives you the tools to bring progress to mankind. And uh, we need that. Uh, we have certainly a lot more male STEM uh, scientists than female. So a lot of the population is not part of it, but we need them. Uh, the, the world can only get more uh, scientific and quantitative, not less. So there has to be some drive towards that education. So it would be great if these alumni would be, uh, if you know, women and the minorities would uh, sign up on that and then one can train or focus specifically on educating um, and, and nurturing uh, these minorities. Uh, so that, that would be one. If, if that, we can accomplish something like that already, a, a little better, that would be a huge uh, win already. Thank you.